Thanks, everyone. So it's a very short talk, this. The big news, VMware, huge vendor of proprietary hypervisors. If you're running virtualization in a company, you're probably using VMware, unfortunately. They were recently acquired about maybe six months ago for like a zillion squillion dollars by a company called Broadcom. So how's that going? <laughs> Not so good. Licensing maneuvers. Mm. Massive market share loss predicted. Calls for regulatory intervention. Customers are unhappy. Rising costs. Worrying customers. That's not 10%, that's 10x, right? <laughs> I know this last one is, you know, it's a Reddit post of a Twitter tweet, but um, we're hearing this from customers as well. I mean, these, these numbers are believable. So, what is the solution? Obviously, I'm going to tell you the solution is Vert V2V. It's a, it's a command line tool. It's been in pretty much continuous development since 2008 or 2009. It was wholly rewritten in 2014, and it's available already in most Linux distros. And what it does, it takes your VMware VMs and imports them into KVM of some kind running on Linux, usually. Why is this even a thing? So why can't you just copy a VM from VMware and just run it on KVM. Well, I mean, the reason for this is that your VM running on VMware expects a certain VMware-y environment. So it's expecting like PV SCSI hard disk, uh, VMX Net 3 network card. And of course, on KVM, we would prefer you to be running Virto devices because that's what we put all of our effort into optimizing and they're much faster and all that sort of stuff. So what Virt V2V does is it copies VM over and it also goes inside the VM. It will change the bootloader or change the init RAMFS for Windows. It can change the Windows registry. It can install Virtio Win drivers and all that good stuff. So it does a bunch of configuration changes inside the VM, which means it will just boot straight away. Now, if you don't like command line tools, there is another tool on top of Vert B2B. It's a user interface tool. The upstream project is called Forklift, and the Red Hat supported tool is called MTB, Migration Toolkit for Virtualization. It does kind of the same thing, but it's, it's VMware through to uh, Kubernetes KubeVert, which I'll talk about in a second. It's using Vert B2B under the hood, though. Now, you know, I'm a command line guy. I don't really use this stuff. I only use the, the command line tool. But I am told that if you want to use this from OpenShift, there is a thing called Operator Hub. You type in virtualization, apparently, and four boxes come up, or more, probably. Um, the important ones are KubeVert. That's the upstream project for how you run VMs on Kubernetes, because obviously Kubernetes is really about running containers, right, not VMs. Um, there is the upstream, oh, and sorry, the downstream of that is called OpenShift Virtualization. That's the Red Hat supported product. There's also a thing called Forklift. That's the upstream user interface that automates Vert V2V. And the downstream product is called MTV, Migration Toolkit for Virtualization. That's the Red Hat um, uh Red Hat version of the same thing. All open source, obviously. Uh, and just a final point here, really, there are, when, when you actually run the UI, you'll find there are these five boxes. And the ones you want to look for are vSphere, which is how you import from VMware. We're also working on ESX direct import um, at the moment. Vert B2V already supports it, it's just the UI thing, right? And OVA, which is kind of an exported VM in a file from VMware. So those are the boxes you want. The, the tool itself, the UI is actually pretty clever. It's, it lets you sort of put together hundreds of VMs into a plan, and then you can, um, you can you know, decide I want to import those VMs in the middle of the night so I don't interrupt my production workloads during the day, and I want it to go over a separate network. But basically... Zoom. I didn't want you to sit and watch a video, so I, I fast forwarded it. But if you want to go watch the slow video, go and have a look at the talk um, page on, on the DevConf website. And it's got a link to 
um, a slower version of that. But basically, it's dead easy to use. That's it. Questions? Five minutes, is it? Anyone got any questions? Sir? So Klaus asked a good question there. Um, his question was basically, you know, or well, wasn't really a question, it's a statement and it's a true one, that we support only a sort of subset of VMs. So we support, you know, the Fedora, RHEL, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE, uh, and other well-known OSs like that. Windows, of course. We don't support, um, I think it's Photon, isn't it? Yes. Which, yeah, yeah, it's, it's something like that. Yeah. There are some VMs, there are some VM types that we do not support converting, and there are various reasons for that. In that case, because it's not a real OS, it's a VMware thing. There are other ones like Alpine that we don't support yet. We may well add support for that in future if someone gives us those money to do that. So um, we'll see. Any other questions? Merav? Was it, was it what it's good? Was it, so may I've asked, was Vert V2V tested at scale? And the answer is very much so, yes. We have used this software to convert seven-figure numbers of VMs for customers. Um, using the UI, I mean, Vert V2V is like a very low-level command line tool, and it does one guest at a time, right? But using the UI, what you do is you, you connect to the VMware server, it'll pull down the list of all the VMs, and you can batch together hundreds of the things. And, you know, as I, as I said before, you can take those plans and schedule when you run them. And, I mean, you know, if you have a customer who has coming with sort of five, six figure numbers of VMs, you, that process is just going to take a long time. And it's going to require some people who know about this stuff to decide not just those plans, but like the entire schedule for doing this, which would probably take months. And, you know, there's a certain amount of, scale there that's that's unavoidable but yeah it's, it's like that. so uh, this seems like this notion of plugin type migration but i've also heard maybe this can be done uh, live migration so the question there is uh, this is an offline tool and could could we do a live migration so you cannot generally do live migration between different hypervisors and the reason is that the hardware is just so totally different that you know a program that was running couldn't would just couldn't work when all of its hardware completely changes the kernel couldn't couldn't deal with that um so we do have a sort of intermediate form um which is not exactly the cold conversion that vert v2v normally does but it's called we call it warm migration and what we do there is we take snapshots on the vmware source those converge just like live migration but then there is a, a reboot so there is still downtime. You have to actually reboot that guest. And during that time, of course, it is down for as long as it takes to reboot. But that's the, the difference is that warm migrations take longer overall, but the downtime is less. Cold conversions are much quicker, but the downtime is longer because you have to wait. You have to be down while it's doing the whole copy. So uh, the UI um, MTV actually just lets you choose and automates the process. So you don't really have to think about it much. Okay, I think we're all done there. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>